streets. Yep. Yeah. Oops. So, um, okay, if you go to the meshing directory, you see this generate surfgerm.py uh, script. So the first thing, I'll just look at that. Um, let me, is, that, is that big enough? Do you need it bigger? Okay. Is that, how's that? I'm not, we're not actually going to go through line by line this whole script. I just wanted to show you some general, uh, what it does, this script takes contours from the slab 1.0 model, which uh, if any of you are going to work with subduction zones, you'll, you might want to be familiar with that because it defines um, subduction zone geometry for most of the world. But uh, what we're doing is we're taking contours out of that model. And then we are, first of all, we're, um, we're converting the coordinates from geographic to our, we're using a locally projected uh, transverse Mercator uh, coordinate system, which we can do. Um, that's done within the script. You'll also see this uh, elsewhere in our tutorials because in our um, config files, we define our coordinate system. Also in our spatial data files, we'll usually define our coordinate system. So anyway, what this does, it takes, uh, let's see, we'll just go down to the end here where I think it goes through. We read in these contours. Uh, first of all, we're going to make a sequence of lines that, and we translate these into qubit journal files, which are, uh, and we'll look at the journal file in a minute. But you define a sequence of lines that are contours, and from that you can make what's called the skin surface in, um, in Trellis or Qubit. So we'll make that surface, and we, then we do a similar thing for the slab bottom. All we're doing is offsetting those contours in a particular particular direction and making another set of contours that we'll take into trellis. And then finally, for the display fault, what we do is we take um, a particular depth contour and just project it up at a constant angle to make a, a make-believe display fault. So completely imaginary, it's not really there, but okay, so once we've done this, so what we'll do Okay, so did you say you had a problem running the, the okay, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll fix that later, okay, yeah, okay. Anyway, when you do that, it will make this geometry journal file. Yes. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, what I'm gonna do now is all gonna be in uh, Trellis and we'll see this journal file. I'll, I'll open it up in here. First thing we have to set our directory. It's already set there. Okay. And this is the journal editor. Um, Okay, is that big enough? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so what um, that Python script, what it did is created, um, it took the coordinates and then just, cre uh, you create a sequence of vertices and each of these, and then each of these sets of vertices will then be formed into a spline curve. So we're gonna do that for each contour. Oh, I can do, 
very quickly, I'll just do one, and then we'll just go through the rest. So you can see, so we took a set of points and then made it into a single curve. So we're gonna do this for the entire, um, I'll find all of the ones for the um, first surface. Those points are downloaded from SLAT 1.0. Yes, yes. Okay. Oops, I didn't create that last curve. Okay, so you can see now we have uh, a set of contours that we there were uh, defining our surface and so then what you do is you create a surface from these contours first I'll do that okay so now we've uh, created our surface this is the top of our slab we don't need those curves anymore so we'll get rid of them and then finally, we're gonna save it. We're gonna export it in ACES file format, which is something that we can easily read back and decube it again. Okay, so I've exported that. Now we're just gonna do the exact same thing with the bottom of the slab. So not too exciting, so we'll just do Okay. Okay, so we've done that. And then the final thing, a uh, very simple representation of, of a splay fault. Okay. So now we have all three of our uh, surfaces that we need. So what we'll do now, uh, what I should do is uh, show you, well, first I'll open up the geometry. I'm also going to open up Uh, the reason I'm opening up this uh, mesh tech journal file first is because you can call other journal files from within one journal file. So what we're going to do, this is our top level file for creating the, the whole mesh that we want. So we can play back the geometry dot journal file from within here. Similarly, down here, we're also going to uh, play back our boundary condition file. I'll go through each one separately, but I uh, just want you to see that we're calling everything from the top level. So actually I'll open up the boundary conditions while I'm thinking of it. Okay, but we're gonna go through the geometry first. So the first thing we're going to do is um, import those surfaces that we just made. Wait, let's see, did I get all of them? We don't do them all at the same time. Oh, okay. Oh, right. We didn't. Yeah, that's right. Excuse me, how do you open those files? The trellis things doesn't open .jou file. Oh, you don't open it. You uh, you use the journal editor. Journal. Yeah, that, that's this uh, little uh, oh, thing there. Yeah, you open files that are either um, an existing, yeah, uh, yeah. And just to 
a suggestion for those of you in the audience, don't try and do what Charles is doing. Focus on paying attention to what he's doing so that afterwards during your tinker time, you can go back and do it. We yeah. found that if we, he tries to go at the pace that you're doing it, we'll get to about two tutorials over two days. Yeah, yeah. If it's much faster, we can cover a lot more material. If you watch, if we're recording the video, you can play back, you can look at the slides later. Um, so follow along, pay attention to what he's doing, try and get the overall big picture, and then work through the examples, read the manual, which goes through these things step by step. Um, and you can go through the journal file step by step and ask us for help if you get stuck. Ah, uh, okay. I just. Uh... I just did a step without telling you uh, what I did. I just <laughs> imported. I imported uh, uh, the two, the the top and the bottom of the slab. But then there's a, a way within Trellis to create a volume between two surfaces like that. So that's what this loft surface command did. So now, rather than just two surfaces, we have a volume between two surfaces. Okay, we're going to make a, a block to hold our whole thing. What we're gonna, okay, so we have, uh, these are the dimensions of the block. We first create the volume. But you'll see that it's in the wrong place. So we need to move it to be, uh, to coincide with the geometry that we're using. Okay, and you see what uh, what we've done is um, the our uh, slab actually extends further out than we need it to, and that's so that we, we want it to entirely intersect the uh, western side of of our block. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, uh, trellis has a chop command which takes a volume and another volume and it'll just chop one with the other. And what's left is the, um, uh, the original volume plus the intersection volume, which is where the two volumes uh, coincide. Takes just a little bit. Okay, so if we look at our volumes now, we have that's the part of the slab that was within the box. That, and then that's the, uh, the rest of the box. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to make a, um, a 40 kilometer thick uh, crust. So we just made a plane. Oops. Let me, uh, okay, we just made a plane there that that's uh, constant uh, depth of 40 kilometers. Then we're going to chop this outer volume with that. Or web cut it. Okay, so now you see we have a separate volume here um, above and below that plane. Then finally, we're going to import our splay fault. So there's that. Oops, it's taking a bit.
Okay, so it's starting to look a little bit ugly now, but we'll tidy it up. So uh, one thing for the problems that we're working on, we're uh, in several cases going to, we're, we don't want to deal with the entire fault. We instead want a small subdomain of the fault. So to do that, we're going to uh, define it with a, a brick. And what the, um, the brick will do is, if you use it to cut the domains, then the uh, lines of intersections on the fault will remain in the model so that you'll have a sharp line going across the fault. And that'll help us to divide the fault into a patch inside those lines and then the rest of the fault outside the lines. So first, we're gonna make, uh, make our brick. Okay, and then we moved it. Um, so you can kind of see it's defining a region, an inner region here. And then what we do is we chop, let's see, we're chopping the um, slab top and we're uh, chopping the splay also with, um, with that box. So we do that. First I'll just, actually let's zoom in on the, uh, So there's our slab top right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop it with that box. Okay, so what you see now is we have, it doesn't show up really well, but we now have a region in there that's, uh, that has lines marking it off from the rest of the fault. All right. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing for the display fault. So let me just. Uh, So there's the separate part of the display fault right there. And then uh, what we need to do is to imprint that information on our volumes because right now Qubit does not know about, uh, about these lines, but what you can do imprinting actually puts that information onto the, um, the surfaces of the volume. And so the two important operations are in printing. So you, you get this information like curves onto the volume. And then there's also merging where you actually merge all these things together. So if we looked at, um, well, first let's do this. If we look at uh, B domain at A, that's this volume. See, right now it doesn't know about the um, about the operation that we just did on the surface. So we'll imprint it. Now you can see that that information is now imprinted on, on the uh, outer surfaces of the volume. And so we're going to do the same thing with our with the rest of our volumes that we need. Okay. So now that information is on the volumes. So you'll see what we have down here. We have these sheet bodies, but uh, we don't need, uh, let's see, I don't think we need any of them anymore. So I think, 
because now all of our volumes are defined and, and we've imprinted all the information onto the volumes that we need so we can get rid of the sheet bodies. So if we do that, now it looks a lot nicer. So we're starting to see our whole thing. So we have our outer, our main box, we have our crust here, we have our slab, we have our wedge, and then you can see we, we have this patch on the fault. Now, so just, this is kind of just to make sure that we have imprinted everything on uh, all the volume information on all of the volumes. Uh, we first do imprint everything. Yeah. Yeah, while I'm, uh, because it occurred to me, I believe that uh, this imprint information wasn't on the upper part of the fault, so we need it on both, both sides. So it'll be, it's going now through every single volume and all the points of intersection and imprinting all the information. And then finally, once we have done all of that, we will merge together because there will be duplicate curves that are coincident with each other. There will be duplicate surfaces in many cases. And then, so you need to get rid of all that uh, unnecessary geometry. Oops, oh, it's still going. Okay. Um, well, while it's running, is there a quick question? Yeah, so um, what we did, you know, where we, we had the fault surface, and what we did, we then created a, a, a box, and we web cut the fault surface with that, uh, with that box. Now, the, that fault surface was not attached to any volume at that point. And when we web cut the surface, it made those lines on it, right? Uh, it, like a, yeah, a set of, of lines. And so then what you have to do is the volumes that are coincident with that surface, there, um, we have a volumes on either side, actually. We have, you know, the bottom and top. But they have actually at this point they have separate surfaces defining their, those boundaries, so they don't know about that information that we just put onto the to the fault surface itself. So what we have to do is imprint that information. So we imprinted it on the um, on the bottom on the bottom uh, surface on the slab on the top of the slab. And then once we had imprinted that information, we deleted the slab surface, which wasn't attached to any volumes. And now what we're doing now, we're also having to imprint it on the top surface, which we hadn't done before, or I mean the top volume, sorry. Uh, the, um, uh, the crust above, above the slab, we have, have to imprint it on so they're coincident surfaces, but they don't know about the geometry on the other surface just yet. So we have to, you have to get it onto both of them. Is that, it's, it's a little confusing, but it's, um, it's kind of like taking a stencil and, and putting it onto, an, onto the uh, surface on the volume. And then once you've uh, done that, you remove that, that stencil. Okay, yeah, this does take a while.